Hi, there are great. Wow, my hair looks. He is incredible, incredible. I'm going to upside down on the floor and sweep it. Check it out, bro. My hair is really bad. Man, there are big chances that you are falling into this video here by parachute. Don't know who I am? Don't know what this channel is? Okay. So my name is Lucas and I am the developer. I am the creator of this platform called It's Magic Engine. Yes, It's Magic is a Brazilian project. It is a Brazilian game engine. 100% Brazilians developed from scratch by Brazilians. Okay, I'm the developer. My name is Lucas. And this channel, The Fuse, is It's Magic's official channel in Brazil. We have another official channel in English. So this video will be made by the official creator of the platform. I'm going to give you here several very interesting details so that you get to know everything about It's Magic Engine. Beauty, what is It's Magic Engine? Guys, It's Magic is a development platform. It is not a game, it is a tool. It is for you to develop whatever game you want, any kind of game. I will show you here several examples of projects and games on the platform so you can understand what kind of things you can do. Just in advance, you can create absolutely any kind of game, no limitation, no nothing, you can create anything. This is the most up-to-date video you will find on YouTube about this kind of content. So I will give you an overview about It's Magic, its projects, and the like. So this video is the most up-to-date you will find on YouTube and perhaps the one with the most information. Given the fact that I created the platform, I can pass some details there. Between the lines and some guts of the platform, I will try here to be as brief as possible, more dynamic. I will just go over it, so you will need to dig deeper. You will find more tutorials on the Brazilian channel, the Fuse channel. So what kind of project can we do with its magic? Let's take, for example, Crazy Racers, which is a racing game. Remembering that these are projects, so they are not ready-made games, although they are well-developed, you can find more complete projects made by the community. Most of the projects that I will show you here are official and not made by the community. For example, we have this racing game here. It's a heavy project, so I'll give it a play, but it will stay... It's a heavy project, so I'm not going to maximize the screen, or it will make the video too slow. It runs the risk of crashing, so I won't max it out, but just to show you that it is a game that runs on its magic. Nice. It's a complete racing game, with a very good scenery. I will give you information about the panels. You will understand what each panel does. And just to show you how heavy the project is, it has more than 22,000 trees. Now we go to a Minecraft project, which is even a video series on the Fuse channel. You can see that it has nothing, but when you start it up, it will build a Minecraft world. This is amazing. So we can make a racing game, a Minecraft game, and several others. Next project, an FPS game. Since we have already shown a racing game in Minecraft, let's complement it with FPS. Look how beautiful this game is. Let's start it. Bullets fall on the floor. I opened a lighter project so that I could display the panels. It is a truck game. It carries boxes and has realistic physics. A more realistic truck model would be interesting, but for now, I will use this simple one for testing. I will log out of my account so I can teach about accounts and how to log in. Now I am at the home screen of the application with no account logged in. Then ads will start to appear. That's because I don't have a VIP membership. I will say more about this in a moment. When you first get here, you will find this screen completely empty. To create a project, click on the green button for this action. Here we begin with a list of free templates. You can use them as a basis for your projects. I will create the truck project that we saw earlier as an example. I'll call it a tutorial. Click on the green import button. When you create your project, a few panels will appear. The first is the signature panel. If you want to subscribe, it is only $2 a month. You can use it without ads, you can use it offline, and several others that are not listed here. The other panel is the renderer. I won't go into detail on this one at the moment, so choose the advanced one for now. To use its magic, you will need to log into an account, then click the login button. If you do not have an account, click the sign up button to register. Enter a username and password. After registering, enter your account information correctly. After logging in, the account name will appear on top. Mine is blue because I'm a VIP member. And you can also become one by clicking on Become VIP. Being a VIP, no ads will appear, so nothing will get in the way of me creating my games. You need to be logged in to use the features of the store, for example, downloading packages. So, to start using its magic, you need to be aware of a few things, the first being the panels. Everything you see are panels, so this is panel and this is panel, everything here is panel, you are panel. I won't go deeper into this subject because this is something you learn with time. 
Don't worry about learning everything for now. Here we have the objects in the scene, so the game is made up of objects. Everything that is in the scene you find in this panel called objects. Here are the files for your game. Here is the console where it shows script errors. Here are the object properties, which you select here. I will teach about properties and components in future videos. This is the 3D editor. This is where you see how your scene looks and where you will move all the 3D part of your game. To maximize the scene, click the indicated button to make the scene full screen. Here are the light settings of the scene. So, for example, you can darken the color of the environment. Put a black color or a lighter one. Next to it are the sky settings. The atmospheric shader is the heaviest. It simulates in real time the clouds and the atmospheric. Next to it is the fog. All the panels up here are game settings. Here is post-processing, and here is nav mesh configuration you will soon find out. Here are physics settings. Here are bake settings. Here you can add new objects, a cube or a sphere. There are 2D objects, complex like terrain, streets, a human skeleton, a 3D text, HPOP. You can find tutorials on the Fuse channel about HPOP, terrain, particles, lights, interface elements, sound elements, and more. Additionally, you can monitor the performance of your game, record frames to analyze resource consumption, and view RAM memory usage, both native and heap. But this is details regarding programming language-related graph information can also be explored. Here we have the editor settings, so if you want to change something that you don't like, you can modify it here. In the future, when you start programming in Java, for example, you may not like the script recompiling itself or formatting itself automatically. There are also language settings available. Currently, its magic only supports English and Portuguese, but it is possible to create the translation if you want. In your preferred file manager, access the its magic folder located in the data directory, where you will find all the files of its magic, including the projects. Open the languages folder and then make a copy of one of the two highlighted files and modify it according to your preferences. After that, this translation will appear in the its magic language list. It is also possible to disable the translation in the thermal flow programming language, which will be shown in an upcoming video. Here are the project settings, but don't worry about that right now. We have the option to export an APK, which is an executable for a mobile app slash game. However, the beta version does not support APK export, so for that, search for its magic engine on the Play Store. Note that there will be two versions of the engine, one with the beta tag and the other without it. In summary, the beta version receives frequent updates as tests, so it's more common to encounter bugs in the beta version. The stable version, on the other hand, receives revised and tested updates aimed at resolving bugs from the beta version. In other words, if you want a version with fewer bugs, use the stable version, and if you want a more up-to-date version with potentially more bugs, use the beta version. Here we have all the legal information about its magic, including its documentation. Speaking of documentation, this is the official website of its magic. By clicking on the three bars and accessing the tutorial tab, you can access the documentation, which is available in English and Portuguese. By choosing one of the options, you can access all the classes of its magic. For example, in the SUIRECT class of Supreme UI, you will find various tutorials on how to manipulate the class, and so on. Now, for example, we have a tutorial on how to export your game to the Play Store in AAB format. So, if you want to publish your game on the Play Store, you can use this topic as a base. The documentation offers several useful topics for its magic. Here we have the Download Manager. Whenever you install a package from the store, it will appear in the Download Manager. Here we have your profile, where you can purchase coins and funds to use in the store. And if you're a VIP member, you can get all the store packages for free using coins. And if it's a paid package or one that costs real money, you get a 30% discount as a VIP member. Here we've got the 3D editor and the game panel. So when you hit play on your game, it's this game panel that's going to show you what's happening. And what you see in the 3D editor panel is your view, kind of like you have a bird's eye view to make changes. To shift the camera, all you got to do is swipe your finger. I'll maximize this just to make it clearer. To spin the camera, just move your finger. Zoom in, use two fingers. Remember though, zoom has its limits. There'll be a point where it just stops zooming. Not a glitch bug or whatever, that's just it because the zoom has its limits. See, it has limits. If you also zoom out, you'll reach a point where it also limits. Thing is, zoom is not created to move you forward like swimming. I'm aiming for those boxes. 
but that's not how you'll reach those boxes. From what I see, it's a common beginner mistake not understanding the camera's operation. This camera is an RTS orbital camera. It's not supposed to have you swim like it is first person underwater. So if you want to reach that box, what will you do? Just tap on it and some buttons will appear. Those buttons are for editing the object. And right beside object mode, you've got a little button with a camera and two arrow symbol. Tap it and the camera will focus on the box. Cool? So it automatically goes to the box. That's how you'll navigate the scene. And now you can zoom in. Now it makes sense for the zoom to have a limit, right? Because you didn't need to go inside here. Had nothing to see inside the box. That's why the zoom has a limit. It's like when you're not focusing on anything, a zoom limit feels senseless. But it's due to this peculiarity. You're always focusing on something. And that's how you'll move around the scene. Say, if you focus on this car and tap on the other little button beside the camera, it'll lock. You can't go from here anymore. You're stuck because of that button. If you press play and the car starts moving and then you swing it to the other panel, you'll see that the camera will follow. It keeps tailing the car because it's locked. Unlocked now. The other button beside it makes a perfect clone of the item. So it duplicates. The other one deselects. And this other starts options related to the red ball. No need to explain for now, I think. I'm going back here. In the left panel, we have options to change the object's position. So here we have the three axes. And here we have rotation, okay? It's kind of tricky to find the right rotation. I'll share a much better way to deal with this. I hardly use these options. I use position and sometimes scale, sure. But I never use rotation. The alternative, go to the property panel. Open the component transform and you'll find there in numerical format. Something that describes the object's position, rotation, and scale in the scene, and you'll adjust them here. It's pretty efficient. So if you want to spin, say, I want to spin this 90 degree here, just enter 90 degree, and you'll spin it 90 degrees, so it's much more efficient. But it's going crazy now because the game's running, so physics is acting up, and here you can adjust position, rotation, and scale with precision. I find it better to adjust here than there. But then you might be thinking, Lucas, I'll even pause here not to get it crazy. I wanted to adjust here without really knowing what number I'm keying in. Suppose here I could rotate without knowing the rotation angle number, right? You can do the same in this panel. If you tap on the letter, we've got a little Z here. See, the Z here is the Z-axis rotation. Just tap on it and the editing panel opens up. This can be done with all these numbers. Not sure if I'll find one here. Oh, found it. Tap any of these and the editing panel opens up. Oops, I reset the rotation. I will have to focus the camera on it now. Here we can see the barrel, right? With the editing panel adjusting the number Z there. You have many options here to adjust the white one. The sensitivity, okay? No need to know anymore. Let me reset it here. Because it exceeds a limit. I'll open the X here. You can spin it, see? No need to know the angle. Just like we would do in the editing mode, right? And there are more options too, like this one which keeps constant. So the options are there to help you adjust the object. To wrap this introductory tutorial up, I'll talk about scripts in the It's Mesh. If you go to the coding panel, let it open up. Inside the coding panel, you'll find stuff related to its programming language. It's programming language. And we have three programming language options here. One's Java, another is Thermoflow. And there's Node Script. I'll create a Java one here just to show you that we can code in Java in its mesh. I'll hit conclude here. It'll open the script for us. This newly created script will land in the script section. So you'll find here the Java one in the file panel. Tapping on it will open it. It'll open here in the coding panel. So we have a Java script ready to be programmed here. Won't go deep about it now, but there are many. And I mean many tutorials about Java on the Fuzz channel. So you can find them there to get your game going. I'm also creating a thermal flow here called THF1, which stands for Thermal Flow and Script 1, all right? I'm letting it launch. You'll see it's a programming language quite similar to Unreal Engine's Blueprint or Unity 3D's language called Bolt. I believe it's Bolt, which is also exactly like this one. So we've got a visual programming language here. Pretty cool to be coding with, okay? You can see it there. You can add blocks. You can put a print, see? Pretty fun to use this programming language. We also have various tutorials here on the Fuzz channel. If you look for them, you'll find them. And the other older language from ItSmash called NodeScript, it has very few tutorials because it's kind of, I would say, outdated, you know.
I believe it's not the best option for you to use these days. That being NodeScript, I would suggest the best options are ThermalFlow and Java, which are the languages you'll find most tutorials for. The record holder is indeed Java, so the language you'll find most tutorials for is Java. But I would say the most robust, providing you the best coding experience would be Java. Okay, so that's it, folks. I've created a project and entered it here. I'll go back to the start to show you your projects will appear here. And if you want to, for instance, delete, you have an option here. Okay, making a backup. Backup is probably something we can cover in a more advanced video. All right, right now at this moment, I don't think we should dive into backups and such. I think it's better we stay with these beginner stages. Okay, so guys, that's it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Join our Discord group where you can get answers. Chat with others who use it. Smash. Discord is really important, guys. It's where you'll get most of your questions answered. Okay, plus you can talk to me. So if you want to chat with me, go to Discord. I'll reappear here in a second. Links in the video description for the Discord group. If you become a VIP member, you'll have access to benefits not all listed in the promotion panel. Okay, let me see if I can access it right here. Subscription panel. Good, I can access from here. Doesn't have all benefits listed, but you'll find them. Soon we'll bring an updated version of this panel with all benefits. It's a great deal, bro, and well worth it being a VIP member. Your experience on it smash will be very different if you're a VIP member. Super cheap, $11 a month, or if you want to pay up front, annual membership has 30% discount. If you become a VIP member, we have a WhatsApp group for VIPs only, so you can get a hold of me quicker on WhatsApp, okay? If you become one, go to Discord, send me a message in the comment section on Discord. Just let me know that you've become a VIP member so we can add you to the VIP group. All right, folks, that's it. Thanks. Any questions, drop them down in the comments. Bye-bye. The video you just watched is only possible thanks to the VIP members of It's Magic who really help us out financially. Cool? So if you like It's Magic, consider becoming a VIP member and you'll get this list of benefits that's popping up here. Look, let me mention a few. You'll be able to use the app without internet. You'll be able to use the app without ads. So you'll completely stop seeing all those tons of ads that appear in the app. And you can export your game to the Play Store, dude. So if you're planning to launch your game and want to distribute it for people to download, then you'll need to be a VIP member. Cool? It's cheap. Look, less than a snack, dude.